lab, we use several kinds of instruments for measuring volumes. For volumes above 20 to 50 milliliters, measuring cylinders are used. For volumes between 5 and 25 milliliters, we use glass or plastic serological pipettes, together with pipette aids. Most common, however, are handheld micropipettes, sometimes also called samplers. These micropipettes come in single and multi channel variety. Most common micropipettes use air cushion principles, where the liquid and the tip of the piston inside the pipette body are separated by air. The amount of air between the liquid and the piston is calibrated in such a way that you can aspirate and dispense the volume and the liquid in the attached tip. In air cushion pipettes, the piston has three positions – the rest position and two depressed positions. In forward pipetting, which is used for aqueous liquids and buffers, the piston should be depressed to the first stop position and then slowly released to the rest position. For dispensing, the piston should be depressed to the second stop position, which ensures that no liquid is left inside the tip. The regular pipetting routine consists of eight steps. First, you set up the required volume, then attach a single-use plastic tip, expel air, and then dip the tip into the sample. You aspirate liquid by releasing the piston to the rest position. At this point, you must inspect the liquid in the tip for presence of bubbles, residue, and then dispense the liquid into another container. And finally eject used up tip. Attach tips of the correct volume. Make sure the tip is tightly attached to the pipette. At the same time, avoid putting too much pressure when attaching the tip, as this could break the shaft. Expel air by depressing the piston until first stop before dipping into sample. Otherwise, you will introduce bubbles. Hold the pipette vertically. Placing the tip at an angle strongly affects pipetting accuracy. Never turn the pipette upside down with the liquid inside the tip. For aspiration, the tip should be immersed just a few millimeters below the surface. Pre-wet the tip before aliquoting by aspirating and dispensing the liquid two to three times. Inspect the liquid in the tip for bubbles, residue, incomplete filling and other pipetting arrows. In case the tip is not full or you have any of the pipetting arrows, dispense the contents and repeat aspiration. Using wrong tips is one of the most common pipetting problems. Make sure you use tips within the specified pipetting range. Another common problem is caused by mistakes when setting volume. Make sure you understand the scaling of the volumeter display. Incomplete transfer occurs when you do not see where you are transferring the liquid or when dispensing the liquid from above the surface. Team or blind pipetting happens when one person holds the appy and the other one is pipetting. Don't do that. Blind pipetting, when you do not clearly see the liquid in the tip, results in arrows and poor reproducibility. The performance and accuracy of air cushion pipettes depends on factors which affect the exact volume of the cushion, that is, temperature, atmospheric pressure and the nature of the liquid you pipette. 
For example, volatile, high vapor pressure liquids such as chloroform or acetone will strongly influence the pressure within air cushion and correspondingly the volume you are pipetting. To avoid these problems, so-called reverse pipetting is used for viscous and high vapor pressure liquids such as acetone or chloroform. For reverse pipetting, during aspiration the piston is depressed to the second stop position and then slowly released. For dispensing, the piston should be depressed only to the first stop position. Notice that in that case you'll have some residual liquid in the tip, which is normal and is supposed to be. This way you may prevent foaming, ensure efficient pre-wetting of the tip inside and reduce dripping of the high vapor pressure liquids from the tip.